So if you're relocating and purchasing some property here in the greater Houston area, you're not too familiar with Houston's ETJ areas, extraterritorial jurisdictions, or MUD taxes, PID taxes, or even TIRS, T-I-R-Z, stick around while I break these down and make them a little bit easier to understand. You're going to want an agent that knows the area to be in your corner. I'm Nick Damian with Texas Property Listings, brokered by EXP Realty. I'm a native Houstonian and licensed Texas agent. Don't go at it alone. Give me a call to discuss your real estate goals. You have to consider property taxes and assessments to get a true picture of what homeownership actually costs. Understanding these expenses empowers you to accurately predict and control your monthly expenses once you own your new home. So we're going to start with Houston's ETJ areas, extraterritorial jurisdictions. The ETJ areas are outside the city limits of Houston, where the city uh, regulates land use and development. It's essentially an extension of the city's influence beyond its official boundaries. The ETJ varies in size and location, but generally it surrounds the city and expands as the city grows. One important thing to note is that while Houston has some authority to issue taxes over areas in its ETJs, residents have no say when electing city officials. Residents have no say when electing city officials. Let's jump into MUDs. MUD stands for Multiple Utility Districts. I mean, oh, sorry. MUD stands for Municipal Utility Districts. Um, it's a government entity that provides uh, water, sewer, and other services to residents in areas where city services are not readily available. So MUDs are typically created to support the development of new communities within an ETJ, and they have the power to levy taxes and issue bonds in order to provide essential services to residents within their boundaries. So let's illustrate this with an example. Let's take a look at these two houses. We have house A and house B, both in the same zip code, same school district, same area. House A's assessed value comes in at $444,946. House B is located within a MUD and its assessed value comes in at $346,257. Roughly $100,000 less than House A. Now let's take a look at the taxes. Here you can see that after calculating the total taxes owed from each taxing authority on both Houses A and B, House B, which is located in a MUD, is actually paying $1,000 more in taxes even though its assessed value is $100,000 less than House A, which is not located in a MUD. So look. MUDs aren't necessarily a bad thing. We need to be able to expand and build new communities. But knowing if that property that you're about to purchase is located within a MUD or not is just one great example of why you want to work with a local agent. Let's move over to PIDs. Okay, so public improvement districts are like MUDs on steroids. They can be used for the same purposes as a MUD. However, PIDs can also be used for sidewalks, landscaping, uh, maintenance, security, you know, and so on. And these improvements help to enhance the overall quality of the district and benefit the property owners within them. Property owners agree to pay PIDs assessments on top of their property taxes to fund these improvements and services. But unlike MUDs, PIDs have a fixed assessment amount and time frame for repayment. And in some cases, homeowners can even pay for the entire PID in one lump sum. So finding the required information for a PID uh, can take a little bit more time, uh, require a bit of research. Uh, unfortunately, I can't just uh, use a map layer with PIDs like I did with ETJs and MUDs. So what are we going to do in this situation? Well, we're going to do what we do with every house before it goes on the market. We're going to do our research. So I'm going to use this house as an example um, that's currently on the market in Woodleaf Reserve. We're gonna go take a look at the tax page, look at the assessments and taxes, and we see here that we don't see anything regarding a PID assessment. Um, so the next step is we're gonna take a look at the community page information. I'm gonna to go to the community website or check out in this situation, go to the builder's website, and I see on the community information on the builder's website that, hey, this house is located in a PID, and this is the annual assessment. So we've determined that this property is most likely in a PID and what the annual assessment's gonna be. 
But as your agent representing you, whether you are a seller or buyer, I'm not just going to assume that the community page on some builder's website is accurate. I'm going to contact a title company that I've built a relationship with, and I'm going to have them verify that if that property is really in a PID, and if it is, what the actual assessment fee is. So let's jump into TIRS, T-I-R-Z, Tax Increment Reinvestment Zones. These areas are designated by local government to stimulate economic development and reinvestment within these specific regions by utilizing TIFs, Tax Increment Finance. Tax Increment Finance is a tool that incentivizes and funds these improvements within the tax increment reinvestment zones. So within a TERS, a portion of the property tax revenue is generated from the increased property values and is set aside for public improvements and projects within its zone. So will that tax increment reinvestment zone using a TIF add additional tax burden? Well, the TIF doesn't technically impose a new tax. What it's going to do is use the improvements to spur new development and raise the property values within that zone. Then it's going to funnel some of that tax collected on the increased value into a fund that pays for those improvements. Okay, so we covered a lot of ground today. Just remember that MUD's focus on providing essential services to newly developed areas within an ETJ funded through property taxes while PIDs aim to enhance the quality and aesthetics of a specific district funded through additional assessments. And TERS, uh, they promote economic growth and development within a targeted area by allocating a portion of the increased tax revenue to fund those improvements. And that wraps up today's video. I hope you found it informative and valuable. Remember that working with a knowledgeable local real estate agent throughout your buying and selling journey can make a world of difference. I'm Nick Damian with Texas Property Listings, brokered by eXp Realty. If you have any questions or need any assistance throughout your real estate endeavors, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.